My name is John Quicon. I'm a member of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission staff. I'm the Environmental Project Manager responsible for the Southeast Market Pipelines Project Environmental Review. With me tonight are Harry Jay and Jenny Zelensky, Commission Environmental Staff, Bill Rod, Mitch Shields, and Monica Haggerty Davis. On behalf of the five members of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, we would like to thank you for participating in tonight's public comment meeting on the draft environmental impact statement for the Southeast Market Pipelines Project. The purpose of tonight's meeting is for us, the Commission staff, to receive comments from you, the public, on the draft environmental impact statement we prepared for the Southeast Market's Pipelines Project. The Southeast Market Pipelines Project, or the SMP Project, is actually three separate but connected natural gas transmission pipeline projects that would involve facilities in Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. The Transcontinental Gas Pipeline Company, Sable Trail Transmission, and the Florida Southeast Connection proposed to construct and operate about 650 miles of natural gas pipeline associated facilities and six new compressor stations to transport up to 1.1 billion cubic feet of natural gas per day from Alabama to Florida. In Georgia, Sable Trail proposes to construct and operate approximately 162 miles of pipeline across Stewart, Webster, Terrell, Lee, Doherty, Mitchell, Colquitt, Brooks, and Lowndes counties. This pipeline will be co-located with existing infrastructure, primarily the, primarily the Southern Natural Gas Transmission Pipeline, for approximately 112 miles. Additionally, Sable Trail proposes to construct one new natural gas compressor station in the city of Albany. Lastly, Sable Trail proposes to construct takeoff points in Doherty and Mitchell counties. These takeoffs could facilitate future natural gas related development and service. Additional information about the SP project and its components can be found on the FERC's website at www.ferc.gov. The FERC's e library is the Commission's administrative record and contains copies of three applications and all supplemental information provided. The library also contains copies of our correspondence with other federal and state agencies, comments and letters submitted by affected landowners and concerned citizens, and our request to the applicants for additional environmental information. In the over 1,000 comments we received on this project, many of them expressed concern about the use of natural gas in Georgia. Georgia is the 13th largest consumer of natural gas in the U.S. and in 2013 produced no natural gas. Natural gas consumption in Georgia is supplied by the Interstate Natural Gas Transmission System. The National Environmental Policy Act requires the Commission to conduct an environmental review of all interstate natural gas transmission pipeline projects. The SMP draft EIS, which was issued on September 4, 2015, and sent to over 6,000 individuals and parties, was prepared in response to applications filed by the three companies in the fall of 2014. Commission staff have worked for over 10 months to prepare this draft EIS. These 10 months are in addition to the years spent working in the pre filing process. In total, almost two years have been spent on this environmental review. An environmental impact statement is an informational document. It is not a decisional document. Its purpose is to inform the Commission about the potential impacts on the human and natural environments that could result from construction and operation of the project. An environmental impact statement describes the environment as it exists today, potential impacts on the environment, assesses and compares alternatives, and includes staff recommendations to avoid, minimize, and mitigate potential impacts. Specifically, the draft EIS includes an executive summary, an introduction which describes the purpose and need of the project, as well as the purpose and scope of the environmental review, descriptions of the proposed actions, including proposed facilities, land requirements, construction procedures, environmental compliance monitoring, environmental analysis that covers geology, soils, water resources, groundwater, wetlands, vegetation, and wildlife, fisheries and aquatic resources, special status species, land use and visual resources, socioeconomics, impacts on property values, environmental justice, cultural resources, air quality and noise, compressor station emissions, reliability and safety, 
pipeline integrity, safety standards and cumulative impacts, alternatives, conclusion recommendations, and 14 appendices, maps, drawings, construction plans, and references. This draft EIS summarizes our comprehensive environmental review of the project and includes our conclusions and recommendations concerning the potential impacts on the environment resulting from construction and operation of the proposed SMP project. As I said before, the Commission issued the SMP draft EIS on September 4, 2015. This began a 45-day comment period, which closes on October 26. In addition to the comments we will receive later this evening, I expect the Commission will receive numerous written and electronic comments. Comments received, whether they be verbal, written, or electronic, are treated the same. There is no preference given to one type of comment over the other. All comments received will be addressed in the final environmental impact statement. Comments may result in additional analysis and revisions to the environmental impact statement. As a reminder, comments can be provided verbally tonight in written form and submitted via U.S. mail to the Secretary of the Commission or electronically via the FERC website www.ferc.gov. For your convenience, we have, also, we have also prepared comment forms in the back of the room that you may fill out and with us tonight. Once again, I want to emphasize that written comments are given the same way as verbal comments. After receiving comments on the draft environmental impact statement, we will prepare a final environmental impact statement. Ultimately, the FERC commissioners will determine whether or not to approve the SP project. This decision will be made after a careful review of the applications, the final environmental impact statement, and will consider all public comments submitted on the project. Before we hear from the first speaker, will everyone please silence their cell phones? As stated in the meeting notice, issued along with the draft environmental impact statement, in order to make this meeting as efficient as possible, will be enforced in a three minute time limit. Your three minutes will start when you begin speaking. At 2 minutes and 30 seconds, the green light will change to yellow. At 2 minutes and 45 seconds, the yellow light will turn to red. And at 3 minutes, the alarm will sound. I recognize the choice each of you made tonight to be here, and I respect the fact that you're spending time away from your wife, families, and other responsibilities to participate in this meeting. <coughs> Therefore, if you're still speaking when the alarm goes off, I'll allow you to finish your thoughts and conclude your comments. The Commission values your comments, and I want to make sure everyone has an opportunity to comment. So I, th I, th I think time will allow, and after everyone who has signed up has spoken, I'll provide an opportunity for other speakers and an additional three minutes for folks that have already spoken. Your comments are being recorded and will be entered into the Commission's administrative record. If you'd like a written copy of tonight's meeting, you can speak to our reporter after the meeting, or you can download a copy once it's been placed in the Commission's record. Again, I want to make sure everyone has a chance to have their comments heard. With that, I will now call the first speaker. Number one, Mr. Alton Paul Burns. 